I really know what to say about my race. I'm so proud of them, and I love the Welsh with a passion that's uh, almost idolatrous. Good morning from Pontry de Ven in southern Wales, birthplace of Richard Burton. In this video, I will of course be showing you where Richard Burton was born and some of the locations that are associated with him in the village. But I also want to talk about the Richard Burton and Elizabeth Taylor burial pact. It was believed that Richard Burton and Elizabeth Taylor had a pact to be buried together at one time. And I'm going to visit the churchyard where, had, had that happened, that's where they would have been buried. Burton was, of course, buried in Cellini in Switzerland when he died. I've actually got a video about that, if you want to check that out after watching this one. Uh, Elizabeth Taylor died in 2011, and she's buried in Glendale in California. Croesoi Pontry de Ven. Welcome to Pontry de Ven. The birthplace of Richard Burton, Ivor Emmanuel and Rebecca Evans. Okay, we all know who Richard Burton is. Rebecca Evans is uh, an opera singer. Ivor Emmanuel. There's a very sad story about him. He was an actor. He was in the film Sulu. Pontry de Ven is only 10 miles from the city of Swansea. A major target for the Nazis during World War II because of the ports and... This was a very industrialised area at the time. A German bomber had just completed a raid on Swansea and there was a leftover bomb on the plane and they decided to drop it on the village. And it landed on Ivor Emmanuel's house, killing his mother, father, sister and grandfather. Just across from the sign is the birthplace of Richard Burton. To Danabont. Danabont translates to under the bridge for obvious reasons. Richard Burton was born here in 1925 and two years after his mother died, six days after giving birth to his brother. Pontry de Van is twinned with a number of towns in Europe, probably because of the Richard Burton connection. This is the Bontvaur. There's a famous picture of Richard Burton and his father on top of the bridge. But I'll, um, I'll show you that in a second, but I'll go up there first. There's a story about the bridge and Richard Burton's father. The iconic photo of Richard Burton and his father, I would say, would have been taken roughly around here. And the story in the bridge and Richard Burton's father was... He fell off the bridge twice, 40 years apart. When he was 40 years old, he got into a terrible fight with a chap called Jeremiah John. And this bridge that I told you that spans the valley, uh, the fight took place at, at one end of the bridge. And um, anyway, in the course of the fight, my father was, he, he was knocked over this sort of piping and he fell from the the end of the bridge, that side of the valley, shall we say. And though it wasn't a, a, a straight fall, it was a really precipitous slope. Uh, and it was 85 feet. And he didn't break a bone or anything like that. Like all drunks, they're very lucky in that sort of way. But he was in pretty bad shape, apparently. Almost 40 years later, he fell off the bridge again, this time on the other side. And obviously he was almost 80 when that happened. And he was quite badly injured in that one. Although he was so inebriated that he didn't feel the pain at the time. He landed on what we call a golven. A golven is, is, is a dead tree which, which uh, has grown out of brickwork, uh, stonework. And it had grown out of this, this ancient bridge that crosses the valley. And he'd fallen. And, and impaled himself, I mean, on his, on his oh. stomach, on the tree, and he couldn't get off. He's very drunk, and it was a wild night, fortunately, because one of the miners coming home from work heard this singing. <laughs> and he decided to take a shortcut up the side of the mountain rather than round by the road because the night was so wild, and fortunately he did. And he heard this singing, and he went to the source of the song, and he found my father. And he couldn't get him off, minor, as strong as he was, he couldn't get him off either. So he ran up and he got down nephews and stuff. And they finally got him off the thing and he was happy as a lot.
Go. Bethel Chapel in front of me here on August the 11th 1984 the people of Ponte de Venn held a memorial service for the life of Richard Burton here and I believe the service was held entirely in the Welsh language we've got Penneth Street here the first time Richard Burton brought Elizabeth Taylor to the village this is where they stayed at Richard Burton's sister's house his sister Hilda and when Elizabeth Taylor was here, she stayed in the front bedroom. I know which house it is, but uh, Richard Burton's niece still lives here, so I'm out of respect to her, I won't tell you which house it is. And when Elizabeth Taylor was here, she insisted on doing the washing up. And after Richard Burton died in 1984, soon after she came back here to visit, the street was packed full of people. And she stayed in the same room that she used to stay in. When Richard Burton made his money in Hollywood, he bought all of his siblings' uh, houses apart from his sister Hulta, who insisted on staying at Penneth Street, much to the annoyance of her daughter, who wanted to live in a posh house. Okay, back on the bridge now. Any Richard Burton fans who plan on visiting the village? Bethel Church is there, and Penneth Street is just on the corner here. I mentioned earlier the Burton Taylor burial pact. You can see the churchyard of Jerusalem Chapel in the distance there. And had they gone through with the pact, that's where they would have been buried. I'm going to make my way over there. Unfortunately, they're cutting the grass, which is, is kind of a good thing, but it's going to be noisy when I'm there, so I'm, so I'm probably going to have to do a, a voiceover. Just in front of the house here is the first, is the site of the first family home of the Jenkins family. Uh, it was 15 Station Road and it was a small miner's cottage. Burton's parents lived here for 23 years and they moved to Richard Burton's birth house only a few months before he was born. So I guess Richard Burton must have been conceived here. I think it was actually here where the house is where these cars are parked must have been a really tiny cottage the bridge is just over there I'm gonna make my way up these hills here now Richard Burton was always a money magnet he was one of the highest well he was actually the highest paid Hollywood actor during the 1960s and during his teenage years he had a money making scheme which involved waking up early in the morning walking up to the hills here and collecting horse manure he would then drag the two sacks of horse manure down to the village where he had a paper round and he used to sell the manure to his customers most of the customers would give him back the newspapers at the end of the week and he would take them to the local fish and chip shop and he sold the newspapers to them because they used them for wrapping the chips but that wasn't the end of his money making scheme whilst he was at the fish and chip shop he had another job there was a machine there that peeled the potatoes but the machine wasn't capable of cutting out the eyes of the potatoes so that was left to Richard Burton an ingenious money-making scheme with every step tying into the next one Miner's Arms, one of the two pubs in the village there's a photo of Burton with his father and his older brother Ivor here and the photo was taken in June 1953 And Richard Burton was asked once if his father watched his films and in a funny but also sad comment he said that um, there were usually too many pubs between his father and the cinema. This is Jerusalem Churchyard. This is where Burton and Taylor were to be buried. When Elizabeth Taylor visited the village in 1984 she mentioned to a vicar that she still wanted to be buried here in Wales. But when she died in 2011, 
She was actually buried in Glendale, California. And this is the grave of Richard Burton's parents. It's in Welsh, but I'll translate it. Um, in dear memory of Judith Maud Jenkins, who died October 31st, 1927, at 45 years old. Also her dear husband, Richard Walter Jenkins, who died May 25th, 1957, at the age of 81. Head, perfect head. Uh, peace, perfect peace, I think I would translate to. Also for the ashes of Eddie, daughter of the above, who died in London July 13th, 1966, at the age of 43. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> On the spot, I can't translate that. Um, there were ten other children, but uh, the above are ten other children, uh, especially Richard Walter, uh, Richard Burton, Saren Cymru'r Byd, a uh, star of Wales and the world, who lies in Cellini by the shores of Lake Geneva, Switzerland. 10th of November 1925 till August 5th 1984 Next stop, California And now I'm at Forest Lawn Cemetery in Glendale, California. And this was the eventual final resting place for Elizabeth Taylor, the Great Mausoleum. It's the main entrance in front of me there. I've just tried the door, unfortunately it was locked. Sometimes you can get lucky and it'll be open. So I'm just gonna have to show you a photo of Elizabeth Taylor's grave, which is right in this central section of the mausoleum. Elizabeth Taylor actually made one of her last public appearances here at Michael Jackson's funeral in 2009. She was at the private service and she was sitting in the front row in her wheelchair. Good men the last wave by, crying how bright their frail deeds might have danced in a green bay rage, rage against the dying of the light. Wild men who caught and sang the sun in flight and learned too late they grieved it on its way. Do not go gentle into that good night. Grave men near death who see with blinding sight blind eyes could blaze like meteors and be gay. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. And you, my father, there on the sad height, Curse, bless me now with your fierce tears, I pray. Do not go gentle into that good night. Rage, rage against the dying of the light.